Nice. Yo! Hey everybody, it's Tyler Bob News Network, how you guys doing? Today's gonna be a fun little stream. Uh, I wanna start a stream series where I talk about the cut content of Valve in order to be able to get the beginner's guide to Valve's cut content out the door. A, 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 a video that I've been wanting to make for a while. Uh, and it's been nice. it's been a little while Tyler, since I've... I'm currently in math class and my teacher keeps using internet terms such as poggers or cray cray. Please, oh please, Tyler McVicker, whatever holy power you may have, please save me from this virtual tormenting right. the school right. system is putting me through. All right, all right. All right, you're better. All right, nice. so, yo, That's Chinese. Cray -cray. That's cray cray. Chinese Duck, thank you for the Twitch Prime 13 months. Terminator Cousin, thank you for the 31 months nice. on Twitch Yo. Prime. Yo! So today we're going to be playing the Half-Life Alex Half-Life 1 uh, nice. press build. Hello Tyler, I just wanted to say that you're a big inspiration for me to make content and also I want to come out here as non-binary. Thank you very much for the support and I wish you the best of luck in your life. All right. Good morning, Tyler. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Chop of the morning to you. All right. How you doing? Back for Blood. I got a Back for Blood ad on this stream. Hey, yo, Tyler. Great video on Back for Blood. However, I think St. Pepsi song might have drowned you out. Good. What? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There it is. Okay. 
Is that an official obsidian beanie? It is. Tyler, you're looking like a fresh boy. Yo, yo. So here's the deal. Finally, the breathing stopped. Tyler, I bought a pizza today and it's what? cold as fuck. Yo. 936p gang, what up? What up, 936p gang? All right, so let's let's talk a little bit about this. Back in 1996, a company started between Mike Harrington and Gabe Newell that was originally called Rhino Scar. Rhino Scar was very quickly renamed to Valve Software and work began on a couple of games. The first one being a submarine title and another one being Half-Life at that point called Quiver. Half-Life was in development between 1996 and late 1998 and released onto the public in November. The version of the game that was released to the public in November of 1998 was internally referred to as version two. There's actually interviews from Valve Software employees from around the time of Half-Life 1's release stating that the version of Half-Life that Valve ended up pushing out the door could very well have been considered Half-Life 2 based on how much they changed and how much they learned about the development of the franchise they were working on because Half-Life had two different versions of development. They were working on a very specific version of the game that by all accounts sucked major dick. It was terrible. And so they restarted development sometime in late 1997 um, and used very little from what was originally there. The version of the game before um, was just by all accounts much, much worse. Um, Half-Life 1 runs on a, an engine called Gold Source itself, a very heavily modified version. Um, of the uh, id tech engine running Quake 1 uh, with features such as uh, interpolated skeletal animation, scripted sequences, uh, colored lighting, a lot of TPS effects for audio being introduced within the engine. Um, this version of the game that we currently have access to, uh, commonly referred to as the .52 Press Alpha, was something given out to press, magazines, internet uh, article websites, uh, and television networks uh, specifically to give previews for the then in development Half-Life game. Um, this version of the game was a stripped down uh, iteration of the .52 build. It was stripped down specifically to show off major set pieces that Valve was excited about or at least happy with to show off the public, to show off to the public to advertise their game. The version of the game that we have is not the full .52 alpha. It was cleaned. It was specifically built to be um, given out to the press of the time. Okay. Um, so we're going to play it, and I'm going to bring in a friend of mine, JC, whom I consider to be uh, one of the foremost experts on the development of Half-Life 1. Uh, we're starting up the game here. All right, all right. All right, let's let's give it a second. 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 Give it a second. Just give it a second. Hold on. There it is. So we are going to be playing in a four-three aspect ratio because that's how it was designed to be played. I'm going to turn down the volume a little bit. Um, and this is Half-Life 1 as of, um, mid-1997. Let's bring JC in here so we can get some questions answered. Hopefully we'll be able to hear JC properly. JC? Can't hear you, JC. Okay, hold on. So for some reason when I use these headphones, um, I don't hear JC. Okay, JC, go ahead. You see, but now you're not on stream and it's a different... Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to switch headphones. Fuck. Alright, one sec. So JC, um, give me a second, no one can hear you.
Hello, 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 hello. Hello, hello, hello. All right, talk again. I'm talking. Okay, there you go. There's JC. Uh, can you hear JC? Uh, I need to restart the game because it's trying to send it out to the wrong. Okay. So JC, give us a bit of a background information on why it's called 0. .52. So I believe. Let me let me pull out the actual build just so I can get my bearings. Because you caught me. You called me without without saying anything as you do. Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. As you do. So. You know, the actual internal development numbers were just a number counting up from when the, like, development started, but they, it seems like they gave numbers like 0.52 and 0.61 to builds just for the purposes of the press. Um, let me, let me pull out the exact thing, here we go. Yeah, the only reason we know it's called 0.52 is because that's what the folder is called on the disk that was, that was leaked. How did this um, folder leak? How did this leak in the first place? So, um, back in 2013, um, I think it was a relative of a Valve employee. I can't remember their name anymore. Um, they found it and they posted about it on Reddit, r slash Half-Life. And, you know, they were pressured to release it and they actually did. And Valve does consider that a leak, a breach of, like, like private files. And how do we know that it, they consider it a breach? I believe Laidlaw in an email... Actually, wait, that might have been an email with me. Let me pull that up. I thought that was common knowledge, but that might have been an email that he sent me, like, when I asked him. Um, but yeah, I I remember asked, years ago, I asked him about the prospect of using content from this in a Half-Life mod, and he said that um, he wouldn't recommend it because it's, like, Valve views it as a leak. Yeah, so Valve is actually quite... Um, but this was years ago. Well, this leaked in 2013, and the, Valve is just very tight-lipped about their development archive, their development repository, anything related to the development of the games that they've created. Um, going so far as to never have released the source code for Half-Life 1, even though similar games of this caliber, such as Quake and Doom, have had their, you know, their source code released for years. Um, so, JC, I'm going to share my screen on your end so that you can Some see. Little, yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, I found the email. Yeah? Um, so, Laidlaw said, I, I asked Laidlaw years ago if I could use content from this in a mod I was working on, which is okay. not dead. Um, and he says, you need to contact our lawyers about this. The alpha build you're referring to was not uncovered. It was stolen. <laughs> was it, though? Talked, and he says, in my opinion, it wouldn't be worth it to make a mod and then discover you're not allowed to distribute it. How and, was uh, this stolen, though? I thought it was a, a press member that just had a disc. No, it, it was like it was like the relative of a press member that like found it. You know, it's not like stealing. They, according to according to like well, legally probably. Because um, it wasn't. It was. I don't know. It's you know, it's legal stuff. So, Jeff Keighley, famously, has four Half-Life discs. Yes. And in the uh, research, by the way, uh, we're going to restart the game and actually give commentary to it. We're, we're kind of giving just background information here with, with just gameplay. Because um, I have plenty to say about these levels. I have plenty to say as well, um, but I'm sure you'll have way more accurate information to say about it. But in regards to Jeff Keighley, I think I probably know a bit more. Um, so... Okay. Jeff has four discs uh, that we know of. Uh, one of the discs is this build, but complete. Um, because this version of the game, and correct me if I'm wrong, is not the full version of the game that Valve had at the time. It was a, an abridged version of Half-Life 1 from the era in order to give previews to press members, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, actually, if you... There, uh, later, or actually, actually, around the time of this build, Valve released a preview CD called Preliminary Findings, mm -hmm. and the videos on that disc are much more representative of Half-Life in late 97. Like, the scientists could talk, like, even though they didn't have, they didn't have, uh, the wonderful scientist voice actor, oh, why did I forget his name, Tyler, what's his name? <laughs> uh, the, the Church of whatever guy, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I'm gonna feel bad forever, I can't remember his name. Whatever. 
I'll, I'll get it later. Yeah. But yeah, they didn't have the Harry voice actor yet. Robbins. Harry S. Robbins. Harry S. Yeah. Hal S. Robbins, yeah. They didn't have him yet, but the scientists could talk. The and the NPCs could actually like walk properly. Yeah. They had more NPCs and things like and the levels were very different. These levels are very old relative to when so this build was made. Why did they release such old levels to the press? It's possible that they were, you know, they were they were afraid of anything like leaking out and they probably didn't want it to be the most up to date version from their servers. That's just a guess on my part because I, I don't know the exact reason. But sure. these levels are quite old. These correspond to like media from much earlier. So around when would you say these levels are from probably summer 97 which is only a few months earlier but when it's like valve in the late 90s a yeah. few months a long yeah. time well i mean the late 90s game development across the board was much much faster than it is nowadays yeah um okay so jeff we were talking Keeley, about jeff Keeley. Yeah, yeah jeff Keeley has uh four discs one is a gold master which we already have access to a gold master it's no the not that big a deal uh, another one, as far as I'm aware, is just an early version of day one. Um, oh, um, we have we also have access to that. Well, it depends on if it's pre-release or not, because there are. Well, I don't mean to sidetrack, but there are no, three versions of day one. Go ahead. What are the three versions of day one? Um, the first one, the first iteration of day one, uh, was released before the game came out, like mm -hmm. like a like a few days, like a month. Yeah. And. The levels are identical to final. The models are identical to final, except for a few little minor differences. But there are two later versions of day one that have no beta content in them whatsoever. Hmm. Isn't this so, version of day one the one that used like the the different version, like the the antidote model for batteries or something? Well, it, it had a, it had a special battery model like, yeah. that was really different, and it also the scientists also had more animations. Um, just, the just reason they more animations like old scripted yeah, from sequences, like, from like cut scripted sequences and like old mm -hmm. idols that they were cut. The reason they took those out was because it 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 like it took up space that they weren't using. Sure, 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 sure. They could sure. have used for other things. Yeah. Um. Okay. So it could be that I don't know. We have multiple versions of day one that's unrelated. So Jeff Keighley has two builds that we have no access to. One of them is a more representative version of this .51 build. This version of the game, this .51 build, uh, is super abridged, missing a lot of features, missing a lot of content, and was spe specifically put together in order to be able to preview the game for press. Most importantly, it was the late 90s magazines, you know? And if you go yeah. and take a look at uh, magazine previews of the time, it's very awesome obviously using a build similar to this um uh, then you also have jeff with a build that as far as i'm aware magic told me it's like early 98 like green hud 98 type stuff yeah um, we should probably explain what that means green hud 98 jc what's green hud 98 okay you're saying it like it's a title um okay so like it. <laughs> early, <laughs> early in 1998, you know, a few months after this build, mm -hmm. Valve had shifted from this HUD. Well, actually, by the time of this build, Valve had already shifted away from this HUD. So they had like it was similar to the Half-Life HUD, the final one, except it was like green yeah. and it was in little boxes. Yeah. And the that was when the HEV suit started to like exist, yeah. the like the power suit instead of just bare arms mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So that's when the game was like a, that was after the, like the reboot and the game was starting to take shape more. Mm-hmm. Even though it was still quite different, of course. So when we say reboot, um, do you know like around what time the reboot took place? Uh, see, this is hard because Valve talks about this reboot, but when you look at the media that was released, it seems more gradual than they mm -hmm. make it out to be. Yeah. But that's that's probably it was probably more of a design philosophy reboot. But the point is that in like around the time, okay. Half-Life was intended to be released November 1997, but they missed that date by a year. Yeah. Because when they when they when they realized that they couldn't make the date, they realized that the game design they were doing wasn't like working. Mhm. Mm and so they sort of changed their design philosophy, retooled a lot of assets and uh, levels, and it became the more story-driven Half-Life that we have now. Yes. And you know, you people call that the reboot or the or the V2 or whatever. 2.0, yeah. V2, etc. Yeah. That's kind of the, the gist of that. So Jeff has two builds. 
and Jeff refuses to release either build. Um, I have heard, this is just a rumor, I have heard that he was actually given permission to release them. However, uh, he would like to be able to do like a, like a, a thing. <laughs> like a book or something or like um, an interactive book like he's been doing so regardless of what jeff ends up doing with the builds uh i will be making a couple of pleas for them to be released for public documentation and preservation purposes and if jeff does end up um making some kind of interactive book to talk about these early very important builds of half-life one one of the most influential games of all time uh, please release the discs as uh, on top of them, because regardless of what you may see in the playable golden path of the game that may exist on these discs, I assure you there is significantly more information to be learned and gleamed from the files within. Uh, that yeah. can be stated for this as well, just because we only have a, a handful of the maps from the final campaign, or from the campaign of the time, which would have been summer 97, even though this was shipped sometime in late 97. Um... We know a lot more about the development of the game because of this, more so than just what could be found uh, in the levels themselves. Is that correct, JC? Yeah, I think that's correct to say. Let me open up the... Uh, there should be... In, in the build, it comes with a, uh, a walkthrough document mm -hmm. that was written by Valve. Let me just pull it out. But yeah, like, if you... It's funny because these levels are so incredibly like broken. Mm -hmm. They don't, they don't really um, work. Like lo uh, there's some missing. They don't always connect to each other. Uh, the scripted sequences don't really exist, and the enemies, you know, they're just bullet sponges. Yeah. Like, there's I no guess ammo. in the late, but you, you, yeah, you shoot forever. No yeah, you just shoot forever. Yeah, which is it is funny again because a lot of this stuff seemed like it existed at this time like at least at least by the end of the year mm -hmm. like i guess they were i guess they were just testing i i can't speculate because i wasn't there yeah but you weren't born i was not you were only like barely born yeah you were All still right. kicking so standing. without further ado let's get started with the main <laughs> campaign uh c1a1 correct jc can you see my screen yes what are we looking at here, JC? This is the test chamber. Uh, it looks quite different from the one that you see in Half-Life, but it is it did evolve directly into the test chamber we know today. Um, so the game started in the chamber. There was no lead-up. There was no, like, pre-disaster segment. It started, mm -hmm. like, while the disaster was happening, and then you just sort of were thrown into Black Mesa. Mm -hmm. There's, like, in the build, there is a document written by Laidlaw detailing some of the pre-story, but it's just a synopsis for press people, really. Mm -hmm. Like, and you can see that the panther eye on the, on the test chamber pad is not real. It's just a cycler. And the scientist doesn't do anything. Like, what's, what do you, what, what are you talking, what's a panther eye? Oh, the panther eye is that red cat monster. Yeah. Um, it was fully modeled twice, um, by, uh, I want to say it was Ted Backman. Uh, at least the first one was modeled by Ted Backman. And it was just a large, like, creature that would run around and, like, pounce on you. It was, just, you know, and they cut it because... Oh, I think they cut the four-legged creatures because they had trouble climbing stairs, convincingly. I think that was said in an interview about Half-Life 1. Because, you know, if you... They, they couldn't they couldn't procedurally generate the animations for the stairs, so they would just sort of hover up each step. Like, that's not the only reason, of course, but that is one of the reasons. Why, what is this button for? I don't think it does anything, but I can check what it's supposed to do. What is this button supposed to do, JC? You have to give me a second to check. So this room eventually evolved into the test chamber that we know and love today. How do we know that this directly evolved into the test chamber? Actually, maybe that's wrong to say because the... Okay, what I will say is that they kept using this design until like mid 1998, and then they completely redid it to be the orange one that we know, like that we mm, know. Mm, like okay. it started out with an earlier, smaller version of this, and then it became this, and then it became a larger, taller version that um, had like a very small pad in the middle. There are screenshots of all of this that I wish we could like show on screen. What kind of test is going on here, though? Like, why is there a panther eye in here? 
Oh yeah. So according to the synopsis written by Laidlaw, I'll read um, that. I'll read that. Can you send me? Yeah, the file? You, have, you have the good voice. Yeah. Um, let me just toss this over Discord. It's called HL Synopsis Doc, and it's from September fourth, nineteen ninety seven, written by Laidlaw. September fourth, nineteen ninety seven. That's fairly early on, isn't it? Um. Yeah, since Valve was found, it was only a year after Valve was founded and only a few months after Laidlaw was hired. The portal device is a dimension spawning gate of unpredictable power constructed in a decommissioned missile silo. So far, no one has ventured through the portal, but there has been a steady flow of odd creatures coming to our world. You are a weapons research scientist who has never touched a weapon slash M dash until now. What does that mean? Tyler, slash? Tyler, that was a, that was a formatting error. This is all you, formatting errors. You have to wait. What are you opening it with? Notepad. Oh, can you open it with like WordPad? Because then it will display properly. You're you're a WordPad. I should have specified that. Yeah. M dash. <laughs> you're talking to dumbass Tyler McVicker over here. Hold on. All right. Open with. You said you WordPad? WordPad? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Should still exist. Oh, look at that. That's so much better. Now it looks normal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You are a weapons research scientist who has never touched a weapon. Until now. The accident in the Threshold's power core fractures the local fabric of space-time, and hordes of creatures begin spewing into our world through the fissures. Monsters are everywhere, and your co-workers are dropping like flies. You head to the surface, but the usual routes are unpassable, damaged by the disaster and infested with monsters. The silo security guards are in a state of primal terror and looking for someone to blame. The obvious scapegoats are the scientists. Namely, you. In your fight to the surface, you acquire a device, which means the difference between victory and annihilation. But you don't realize whose victory until too late. As the portal experiment's first human subject, you are cast into the alien world to confront the ultimate horror, to cut off the invasion at its source. In Half-Life, you won't just go head-to-head -head with an alien boss, you will fight it from inside out. None there's a lot to unpack there. Uh, yeah, there's um, nothing. That means nothing. None yeah. of that means anything. Like, you can see the beats of Half-Life, but really Laidlaw made all that up as he was going. Mm-hmm. Like, as, um, we know Zen was originally intended to be the inside of the boss monster, like a, lar like a large monster. Mm -hmm. But uh, they never built any of that. That was just an idea. And you can see the roots of that in this document. And also, that stuff about a device... And All what, that is. What the just... hell is he talking? What device? Yeah, like I have no idea. I think I think he was just making it up. Not to say that that's bad. That's a writer's job is to make stuff up. Yeah. But they never built any of that. Also, you can see when they were intending for the, the security guards to be hostile to you, um, which was already not a feature by the time of this build. Funnily enough. So the security guards at one point were hostile to the player. Yeah, and they they thought it was more fun if they were like. Uh, they were like friendly and could fight alongside you. Mm. Originally, fun fact, they did that experiment with hound eyes, but players kept shooting them on sight, so it didn't work. Oh, hound eyes were going to be friendly at one point, or at least passive. They were going to be passive aggressive, or or at least just passive friendly. Aggressive. They were going to just like make comments about what Gordon was wearing. Yes, of course. That's what I meant. That's definitely what I meant. Um, okay, so this is the something that you 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 wake up. During unforeseen consequences, shit has gone down. You push the button, nothing happens. There's a dead scientist that you killed on the ground. Wait, that's unrelated. And the panther eye. So, like, why would they just put a cycler panther eye on the thing? Like, so we have to think about, like, from, from the mind of Valve. Like, they're showing this game off to the press, who's then going to be writing about the game, right? Yeah. So this is their first impression of Half-Life, of their first game as a company. What the fuck were they thinking? What the hell kind of opening is this? I think, I think they 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 kind of they kind of figured out that they were doing it wrong like later because like by 1998 they were providing like full access to a more recent copy of the game. Yeah. Which it's sad we didn't get one of those. Had oh, to be this we one. We will one day. We will one ha day. But like regardless. 
they they usually Ugh. had pretty strict guidelines about what could and couldn't be shown oh, and how it had do. to be shown. They still do. They, 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 that of course. version of them still exists. Like, look, Valve is not the most documenting preservation companies out there. In fact, I'd say they're one of the, the least. Um, because they just respond so poorly to any kind of, of older versions of their games being out there. Um, and unfortunately, they have no intention of releasing anything from their, their, you know, development periods ever. The only reason we have anything is because of leaks. It's just how it is. Yeah. And if, if they consider a, a, an early press build being distributed on Reddit as an illegal breach of security, oof, oof, that's not good. That, uh. So... Jeff, that was about five years ago. That, to be fair. Oh, it was seven. It's 2013. Oh no, five years ago was when I asked Laidlaw when he said that. Oh, okay. Well, Laidlaw don't work there no more. No, he don't. So, are there any articles or press reviews from this build of the time? Yeah. Oh yeah. There, I, I have, I have a hold of screenshots. I just don't, I don't have like any articles on hand, but I do have screenshots from the period on hand. Okay, so, like, <sighs> JC, what's X Lab? Oh, that's a, that's that's a big question. Um. So, Xlab started as like a like an environment that was like the facility that you were in. Like very early on, it was just the facility you were in. It was called Xlab mm -hmm. as a, as either as a placeholder name or as just like a cool sci-fi name. Yeah, and um, they made some levels that were called Xlab. They had like like sci-fi rooms with lasers and like stuff like this even, and like lobbies and stuff there's like screenshots of levels that are called x lab and like when they sort of started going into a bigger story structure like even by this point they had taken these x lab bits and sort of spread them around the campaign uh so much so that one of the chapters in the alpha um reactor lab which turned into lambda complex um the map name in the in the map data is called x lab 2 energy which is like some kind of weird leftover from when it was all X Lab. Um, the cut female scientist model has X Lab on the back of her coat, which mm. is interesting. And uh, so let's 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 actually play this thing. Yeah, we've been talking a long time. Let's go. All on right. A bit. So you push this switch, which is how the game. So this was the original beginning of the game. They didn't cut anything out from the beginning. This was how the game started. Correct. As far as we know, yeah. You just, just w dropped they hadn't, in here. They hadn't built the uh, like pre-disaster stuff yet. They, that wasn't even an idea yet, was it? Probably not. Yeah, that was probably something that came with the reboot. All right. Well, I, is, I'm pretty sure that's what it was said, yeah. This is not Absolute Zero. This is a legitimate... This is the build that leaked. Yeah. This is the original, yeah. This is the original. All right, so do we go to F-154-JK or B-59-1-FG? I think we should go to to the right, the blue one. Okay. It's, it's interesting because you can see, like, like sort of leftovers of when they wanted to do branching paths because that was an early, early, early idea, like X-Lab. Mm -hmm. They wanted to have a more open environment uh, where you could sort of explore. But, of course, with, like, the Quake engine and... 1997 technology that wasn't super feasible mm -hmm. but they're, they're still trying in these levels which are of course earlier than the build itself but you know what i mean like if you go to the left it takes you to the alien cages if you go to the right it takes you into the main lab and if you you know if you played half-life recently you'll recognize this door set piece mm -hmm. and all this so stuff there were things recycled like there's a lot of stuff that was later found in Half-Life. Yeah. yeah, you have to click. Headcrabs are one-hit KO for some reason. Yeah. So be careful. Anything special you can tell us about this room? This room? Um, no. No? This this design didn't really transfer... They didn't really reuse this design with the blue panels and set in the wall and stuff. Like, they they went for something simpler. It's it's interesting because early in the development they tried to make these really detailed levels with like mm -hmm. you know you see the, the inset panels and the and the the lights that are hanging from the wall and like all this all this detail in the walls and yeah. they realized that not only did it perform badly on low end systems 
if you were running at the lowest resolution, lowest supported resolution, you couldn't even see that detail. Mm -hmm. So they just cut it for the most part. Well, I mean, they decided that fairly late as far as I remember, because like even anomalous materials, which was an idea that came fairly late in development, looked significantly more detailed during most of development. Correct. And they effectively just went, nope, rectangular corridors, fuck it. Because, like, you know, in 1998, that made sense. But in, two, you know, this stuff looks better in it that does. in terms of detail. But that's because we're on, like, 1080p monitors and stuff. If you were running at 320 by 240, you wouldn't have been able to see this detail. Oh, that door opening. Yeah. Why does uh, it do that? I have no idea. It's just technical bugs. Like... It, there's two versions of the alpha that leaked that leaked they're they're both in the same thing mm -hmm. you have one that runs on uh open gl and one that runs on software which means it doesn't use um like a well a 3d F a 3d accelerating yeah. yeah it doesn't use a 3d accelerating graphics card so um it's funny because these two builds are actually different very slightly different because the open gl version didn't support certain features so the features weren't in the build like, for example, the software version has weapon switching HUD. Um, it also has, like, a HUD that isn't, like, have Broken. blue lines around the edges. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it also has the ability to drop weapons, which is a really interesting feature left over. Uh, which, side is the, which side is the ladder side? There you go. Why is the ladder invisible there? What? I have no idea. Yeah, yeah this should be Laidlaw was hired and came up with the story completely himself from scratch, or was the idea of Half-Life already there, and he was hired to flesh it out? He was hired to flesh it out. Um, He was hired in July 1997, ostensibly to work on Prospero. Yeah. But he was also hired, like, on the side, he was supposed to clean up the story of Half-Life so it could release by November 1997, which obviously didn't happen. Mm-hmm. Um... You know, Prospero fell by the wayside eventually, and a lot of the mm. storytelling aspects from that game sort of merged into Half-Life, along with the Quake shooter aspects to become Half-Life. Mm -hmm. So this room looks pretty pretty good for a Half-Life 1 map. Like, mm -hmm. like, like, look at this room. This is a good-looking room. The rotating light does a lot to, like, yeah. help. That's why they use that in the final, in this room in the final. A lot of these individual rooms showed up in the final, which is interesting. Like, this this computer server room with the rotating light, with the tipped over computers, this is in retail in Anomalous Materials. Yeah, but a completely different, unrecognizable version. Yeah, but it. look at the look at the um, look at the computers, not the uh, the ones the servers on the wall. Yeah. With the, they're kind of similar. Yeah. Not those ones, the the ones with the keyboards. They have sort of a similar design. They might even use the same geometry. Because, you know, Valve, Valve would just copy old geometry all the time. They still do that. So I just, I just pushed this server over and then open yeah. this door. I kind of like that as, yeah. a, as a mechanic, although it's not very, uh, like, signposted that you can do that. Oh, another thing that software has is software has, like, working transparency on certain brushes. Mm -hmm. Like how those doors had black windows. Like... Yeah they wouldn't in software mode can you run software mode on high resolution uh i don't think so um if you if you go on youtube and you look for marfie black's channel he made a video on the alpha where he runs it in software and i think he's running it at the highest available resolution which is not mm, very high okay it's oh, the video we, where he we just oh. switched levels yeah oh so oh oh yeah oh. so it's a little janky but um, seamless transitions was something that Valve created mm -hmm. um, from Quake. Quake mm -hmm. didn't have those. Yeah. So, and they're still work in progress too. Um, like if you go back, none of your progress will be saved. Yeah. Like everything you did won't be saved. Of course, in Half Life, it saves your progress, but not here. Which way should we go, JC? They both go the same way. Oh, okay. Circle. So you could have skipped all of that lab by going left at the start, and mm -hmm. you would have gone here instead. You would have come out of that door, that airlock. It's true. This is one of the first areas sketched for Half-Life, um, if you look out there. The area with the catwalks and the cages and the lights had crabs. Yeah. This sort of, we have concept art from Raising the Bar, which is like, 
it, it's very early because it uses the old Quake naming scheme. Mm-hmm. It's called like chap. It's called like Area One Level Fourteen or something. I wish I could just put it up on screen, but yeah, and it's basically the same as the concept art. Here's a good question: How much of this is really playable to the extent that you can play through it right now? Um, it's hard to. It's like you can shoot the enemies and they die, and you can kind of progress a little bit, but it's kind of hard to say. Okay, in terms of playability, you can't play past that cages map because it's missing a level, and you have mm-hmm. to use the console to load the next one. Yeah. Uh, so there's like stuff like that. Uh, oh, if you go back to that lab that didn't open all the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it's playable, but it depends on what you consider playable. If you shoot, if you shoot that tank, it should explode. Or maybe try the fire extinguisher. The fire extinguishers would explode in the build sometimes. I know. I know. There's a hole into that room. Try a try a grenade. A grenade. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I thought oh. like there's grenades. Ah, I know. I know. There's a, a fire extinguisher Ow. in this map that can explode. Hold on. There you go. Half Life by Valve LLC. Ah, maybe I was wrong. Maybe it's another room. But I know you can get in there eventually. Not that it matters. <laughs> Like, I, I don't want to be too mean, but really, the build is very, like... This is an it's not awful a, game. It's not a game. It, you just have infinite ammo. Some enemies are one hit. Like, This lo- is terrible. It's awful. Valve should be embarrassed. Fired. Valve should be fired. Valve should be fired. Look what they made. What the hell is going on here? <laughs> we, we kid. We kid. Oh, um, someone asked, anything interesting regarding the sound effects? Are there copies from older games, some things that made into Half-Life? Uh, also, someone said, that's why they don't release this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> We're kidding. We love this shit. Yeah, yeah, literally. Okay, um, as for sound effects, there are some sound effects from Quake in the folder. Um, in, like, in the sound folder, I mean. But mm-hmm. most of the sound effects in here are in the final game, except for like a handful, like the weapons. What, but, what, like, what sound effect is that? The shooting of the SMG? It's supposed to be a silenced MP5, an MP5 SD. Mm-hmm. But wow, it sounds like a pea shooter. Oh goodness. The pistol is an interesting sound effect, I guess. I wonder how all those enemies animating and attacking would have performed on a 1997 yeah. computer. Yeah, let's just take a room and fill it with seven enemies. Or, no, ten enemies. I didn't Eleven. know this was made by Frank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, multi- Someone asked about multiplayer. Um, it has multiplayer. Multiplayer was functional and did work. And they actually did play tests with PC, or PC, with, like, PC Gamer mm-hmm. and other people using this, using roughly this build. Uh, like, multiplayer play tests in Stockyard which was the map Tyler was in earlier. Mm-hmm. Where do I go? Um, oh, there's nowhere to go. You just have to go back. It was just, it's just, this is just a side exploration stuff. Like there's, there's no, there's no golden path here. This is just a way to, this is just some side stuff. And now all your progress is reset. So the enemies are back. Uh, Valve, fix, fix it. Like, I guess if you were used to playing Quake and Doom, this might have been interesting. It yeah. wouldn't have been great, but it would have been interesting. Okay, we have to stop ragging on Valve. It'll make them okay, never want to I'm sorry. I love, I love Valve. I love yeah. Half-Life. I, yeah. This is super interesting to me, and I love looking at it. Like, seriously. The scene, Why do you think I know all of this? Yeah. I've looked at this for hours. Seeing how they... I mind you. Where? Oh, really? I thought there was a headcrab in this room, because it I always killed me. I thought there was, too. I thought there was... Oh, there he is. Ah, there he is. <laughs> Knew it. Ah, oh, back at the start. All right. Oh, well. well, now now you've gone back the side path, so now mm-hmm. you're down instead of up. You're down at the bottom. That's back. It sent me the other way. Yeah. Yeah. So these cages. I want to talk about these cages from a design standpoint for a second. Okay. So these these cages that contain scientists and aliens. Mm-hmm. Like the the okay. If you guys remember questionable ethics. That yes. chapter is very late in the game, and it has, um, it has, you know, 
aliens in experiments and in cages and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to give you... It's supposed to surprise the player because it's like, oh, these aliens aren't invading. We've already had them on Earth in experiments, yes. like, already. Yes. And in this version of the game, the second map of the game has the cage aliens in cages. Like, ruining the surprise, basically. Having uh, having it happen immediately. I know, but why are there scientists in the cages? Are they doing experiments on humans in this version? I have no idea. That that's the, it could be that that would be up to the mapper who made this. Which mapper made this? Is this a Dario Casali map? The Dave Riller map? Let me see if I could find out. Like, the, we can we can find out some of these things because in the alpha there are demo files. Mm -hmm. um, do I have to explain what a demo file yes. is? Yes. Yes. Okay. A demo file is a thing from like Doom through Quake. Uh, it it also exists in Source and stuff, but yeah, but it was a si it. it was a system where people could record their gameplay, um, and and play it back live mm -hmm. by recording the events that happened in the game rather than recording the frames to a bitmap or whatever. Mm -hmm. It was a much smaller and more effective way to record footage of a game. Uh, so in this build. There's a demo file for every level, uh, or almost every level, that are recorded by Valve employees of them playing their own levels. And yeah, if you we'll you know if you play those. them back, we'll play yeah, some we'll of those later. Those. And it's interesting because the way demos work is they save the data that's happening in the game, mm -hmm. so it actually shows some cut features. You're back, yeah. Um, it actually shows some cut features like. There is a demo for Office Complex that shows a heavy weapons grunt um, How working. How that work, though? Like, why is it that that works, but in the game it doesn't? Wouldn't it still require the entity to exist? Um, no, actually, because it, it records, like, it records the movement of the model and, like, the bullets, but it doesn't record, like, the AI. It doesn't need the AI because it's all a recording. Mm. But the model is still in the game, so it doesn't... It needs the model but it doesn't need anything else, really. It needs the model and the sound effects. So, this level is this level is hard to figure out, but there is, like, a solution, I guess. Yeah. You have to it's, get in there. This is supposed and... to be a puzzle. Yeah. yeah. You're supposed to get in that room there and pull the switch and the door opens. The door you're supposed to go through is the one behind Tyler. Uh, if you go down the hallway, yeah, all the way to, here. to the right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it opened. Nice. I did it. So, so this that's like a staircase that leads somewhere up, like backtracking. But if you go through that double door, the game will crash or it won't load the map because the map is missing. Um, really? Yeah. Uh, try going through it. Or no clip through the door either. Either way. Oh, I think they turned off the ability to, to leave, right? Probably. But that's the way you're supposed to go because there's a change level. Also, V should be bound to no clip. Oh. In the config I gave you. Yeah, there you go. So where's that map, JC? Uh, it turned into the level with the Akira elevator. I mean, it might have it might have even had it. That might have even existed at this time because there's like screenshots from just about this era that yeah. showed the Akira elevator. I um, that's the elevator in in the early part of Half Life that goes at a diagonal. You fight the head crabs. Head crabs. Yeah. Yeah, it's based on one from the from the Akira the movie. Yeah. And also more, more more so the manga, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so I call it the Akira Elevator. Where do we go now? What map do I do now? C one A two A. That is the first level of Office Complex. Oh, it's giving you some quake errors. Excuse me. Okay, try single player like new. Oh, there you go. So Welcome to office complex, everybody. Yep. You got the, the triangle button and the square button. Yeah, so th this this should look very familiar. This mm -hmm. this evolved directly into the final game. Um, like you have the break room, you have the stuff. You can actually uh, go in the break room by blowing up the fire extinguisher. Really? Yeah. Oh. I, I guess they intended for fire extinguishers to be like an explosive. Um, but they only use it like once or twice. And then, you know, there's a lot of this stuff has no purpose. You can just do it. Yeah. Oh, sorry. My chair squeaked. 
That was a fart, right? No, it was the actual chair squeak. Ah, okay. If it was a fart, I would have told you. Okay. I would have I would have told all three hundred people watching as well. Ah. Uh... Yeah, the head crabs come in behind you. <laughs> I should have said that. God mode. Yeah, this is. They even um, in the in the in the um, in the document the readme for this build. They mm -hmm. even they even provide like, hey, here's some commands to make playing the game easier. It's like no target <laughs> god mode. Hey, our game doesn't work. It doesn't work. Here, here are some commands that'll help. Hey, does this um, one explode? No. Why only some? I don't know. They That's just bad design. That is bad design. That is that is that is no excuse. That is just a bad design. I'm sorry. I'm uh, who made this? Like probably Derek Casali or someone made this. I'm yeah, sorry. Probably Casali made this one. Let me go to let me go to the page for Office Complex and see who made it. Office Complex is the best level. It's the best chapter of Half Life. Yes, it's set, okay. According to Combine Overwiki, um, the designers of Office Complex were John Guthrie and Mark Laidlaw. Mark Laidlaw. He, he probably he probably didn't do mapping. He probably just like helped design it. It it doesn't like yeah. But yeah, this was actually quite. Similar. Oh, and uh, in that room where the turret was, that's yeah. where a heavy weapons grunt used to be. Yeah. Uh, in the demo file, the de the grunt actually like exists, and you can see how he worked. Again, even though even though he doesn't exist in the code. Also, that that weird glass particle that's like brown. Yeah. It lo it looks it looks correct in software mode. Oh, okay. It's like blue and transparent. It looks better. Oh, this is another branching path. Where do we go? If you go, um, do you want it the longer path or the shorter path? Longer. Well, then left. You want to go left. If you go up to the right, it, it's a it's a it's a non-Euclidean corridor that leads to the next area with no challenges whatsoever. A non-Euclidean core. Oh, Barney, no! There he goes. Bye bye. Oh wait. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, he's gone. So I say it's non-Euclidean because if you compare the geometry of the levels, it does not actually physically work. Like it's just a yeah, it does not physically work. Hmm. Especially if you no clip out of bounds and you like look at how it's supposed to work, it just it's just dumb. Is V bound a no clip, by the way? Yeah. Yeah, it is. So, you know, a lot of this is just, like, little details that I could talk about all day. I guess that's Do what it. we're here for. That's what you're here for. Isn't that's on around known for. Euclidean? Um, yeah, with the changes. If you, like, if you like layer the maps on each other, it's completely it doesn't make any sense. Which probably didn't help the uh, being able to traverse it effectively. Oh, yeah, Office Complex was the introduction of the grunts for some reason. Hmm. As you can see from the fact there's grunts here. Uh, soldier. At what point, like, was Half Life a much smaller game at this point? I mean, you could, you could, you could make that argument based on the amount of levels that are here. Like, you know, you could, you could kind of, you could kind of burn through these levels in like an hour. But that's obviously not what they intended at the mm. end. Also, I think, I think in that little room is the first Barney. Maybe I'm wrong. No, that's the first Barney. Come on, Barney. He, yeah, he can't walk through that little gap. He can barely walk, period. Like, the AI is so buggy, and the there's no AI nodes. Also, I'd like to point out that because the maps are, like, the tools are still basically Quake tools, if you go mm -hmm. back in the break room... If I go back in the, which break room? This one. You see how the parts are just disappearing? Oh, he made it out. Nice. You see how the parts of the map are just vanishing under your crosshair? Yeah. That's um that's due to bad visibility compiling, bad vis bad vis calling. Hey, someone just rang my doorbell. I'll be right back. Oh, I gotta keep them entertained. Yep. Well, the Barney model was based on Don Knotts, who was an actor who played Barney Fife on the show on the Andy Griffith show, uh, in like the '60s. And they thought that Barney Fife would be a good archetype for like. A security guard, which I guess is correct because he's kind of funny and nice. Oh, I can read chat. Yeah, Barney likes to walk in place. That's just the thing he likes to do. But yeah, so like the uh, the face texture of Barney is directly based on the on the actual face of Don Knotts. 
uh, and people call him the freeze Barney because his only line in the alpha is freeze. He just yells freeze if you shoot him. And since Tyler is not here, Tyler can't generate it. How do you, how do I know all this? Oh yeah. Barney was supposed to be a, a hostile NPC originally. Who am I? I'm JC. I'm like one of Tyler's like consultants. I've been working with him for like five years. And I've worked on like a couple of Half-Life 1 beta mods. What? Who am I? What is my profession? Uh, I deliver pizza for a living. Um... Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see that test map later, uh, where Barney throws the scientist. Professional stinkhead, yeah, that's me. Pizza logistics engineer, yeah, it is it is Domino's. I do know a lot about the Half Life Two beta, but that's not what the stream is about. I'm sure we'll do another stream at some point with the Half Life Two leak. Half-Life one or more than two. Um, I think both games are good. I like. I like. I think I've replayed Half-Life one more than two. Uh, the Ginger Scientist. The Ginger Scientist is here. His name is Egon, after Egon Spengler from. I'm, I'm from back. I entertain them. When I talked about pizza. That's not what I wanted you to do, but you did. I also. You. I did talk about Half-Life. Also, I talked All about right. Half-Life and pizza. Pizza's good. I talked about the Barney model, how it was based on Don Knotts from Andy oh, Griffith. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Gotta love Don Knotts. Also, the Ginger Scientist is here. He was based on Egon Spengler from Ghostbusters. Correct. Opposing force and... is fucking awful. What are you, five? It's a fine game. I don't, I don't hate it. I like it, actually. I love Op 4. So this level, is, this area is in the final game, but the textures are totally different, so it's kind of unrecognizable. Like, Wait, is this in you, Forget About Freeman or something? No, 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 no. Um, if you stay where that Barney is, if you look like in this direction, um, behind you is where the vent would have been that leads into the, uh, and and out that door that's closed that leads to the uh, the cafeteria in the beta and in the retail. Uh... This is the in, in in the beta version. This or in the retail version. This is textured with like concrete, and it leads out here. The cafeteria. Indeed. Office complex was just much bigger. It was also that happened. Oh, uh, you you just went back to the non Euclidean yeah. corridor. <gasps> Barney. Barney, no. Like how you went back just to do that. Yeah. Also, I also like how the doors always open in your face. They don't open away from you. Love it. Valve. So there was supposed to be a scene here. Um, in this in this version, uh, there's slippery water, so the player like slips and falls into the glass and falls down. But there was also um, in the beta version, like a few months after this, they made a scripted sequence where a scientist would slip and fall and like die. <laughs> Die. By by hitting, yeah. In my Half Life also, game. Also, there's no way out of here, so you can either grenade jump or no clip. Wait, there's really no way out of here. No, uh, you have to use the swim up, swim down commands. Try page up, page down. Does page up and page down work? They're they're looking. Ah, uh, go in the. Oh yeah, I turn off no clip and try grenade jumping. It's just like rocket jumping except with a grenade. There's glass there, Tyler. <laughs> so the way oh you almost had it the the way the, the way the no clip works is the same way it works in quake where you can't actually go up and down you have to use the swim commands to go up and down because no clip is just like a version of the swimming command yeah where you can swim through the geometry yeah game sticks you to the ground So there's not much to do in this level. You got to go through the freezer, like in retail. 
like a lot of the layouts here in Office Complex are like similar, mm -hmm. but the uh, they it's it's just it 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 sort of plays shorter and it's less fun. And they it's actually not fun at all. They remade it from scratch. It seems. Um, some of the geometry in this freezer is the same, and also some of the geometry in like the cafeteria. But they did they did overhaul it massively. Uh. And like the zombies as an enemy type didn't even exist yet. Mm hmm. Where does Tyler go? You have to you have to push a crate up to that vent and go through it. Oh. Okay. Wonder what AFFMB AFPMB means. Wonder what that means. It means Mike Harrington's going to quit after we ship this game. Yeah. And lose out on millions of dollars. Because he's a dummy. Dummy. Hey, Mike Harrington, if you're watching, you're dummy. <laughs> Do you think I'm he sorry. could ever come back and be like, Gabe, can I have millions of dollars, please? Gabe would probably say no. <laughs> Gabe would be like, sorry, Mike, you should have you should have said that 20 years ago. Yeah. It's too late. These are, these are real people we're talking about, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to point that out. There's the cafeteria. Yeah, they uh, zombies were a planned enemy because there are some set pieces that revolve around zombies, but the model nor the AI exists in this build. Um, oh, interestingly, right here, you see that you see that computer? Mm -hmm. That used to be a door, and then behind you would be another door that led to a whole area of office complex that doesn't exist anymore. We can we have a screenshot of it. It could be related to the. Um, the box art area, but it probably isn't. It could be, though. I have no it, idea. It, 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 honestly, we, look, there are so many questions that will never be answered about this fucking game. Because it's just it's just little minor details yeah. that I'm interested in, but, like, you know, only beta fanatics, like all of you watching, are interested in. Gotta love, gotta, gotta get me that beta. Beta. Tyler McBeta Vicker. Tyler McVicker. AKA Beta Man. Also, barnacles didn't exist. Um, although a, a video from a few months after this did show that they, like, were, the model was already final by the like, they didn't change the model at all once it was made. I think you can just yeah, instead of breaking the vents, you have to push them to the side. Oh yeah, that's fun. Love that. The vents, the vents break from under you, and there's no way to know which ones. That was really cool. You know, uh, I'm, I'm sad they took that out. Yeah, just no clip through that door. Hang on, I, I'm i gonna have to update my config to, uh, I'm gonna have to update my config to have a no clip with swimming commands. Oh wait, doesn't it? Why is the movement so stuttery? Stuttery? I don't know if it's stuttery. I'm looking at it on the stream, it looks fine. I mean, it's like, I don't it's know, not it looks great. fine It's you know, it's not Half-Life 1. Like, they made yeah. one of the best games of all time, and it took them a while to get there. And the reason why I think it's important to be able to see where how they got there is to be able to teach future game developers that, you know, even the, even the greats make mistakes. Oh, uh, try, okay, for Noclip, try using... To go into Noclip and use G. That should make you go up. There you go. I'm floating. I don't know if there's a go down one, though, so... Um, floating in the sky. Source movement yeah. is, like, a hundred times better than Half-Life 1's. Yeah, so just shoot out all the ones that'll break, which is, like, all of them. You have to go along the beams. Which is not which is not signposted to do at all. I wish it was. Also, the lights just float, which is great. Love it. Crouch when you. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's janky. It's junky. It's just a beta. It's not meant to be played like this. <laughs> not at all. Really, the intention the intention was for press people to take pretty screenshots for their magazine. Um, crouch when you come. Crouch before you come out of no clip. Like, hold crouch while you're coming out of no clip. And up a little more. Yeah. There you go. 
You got the drop on him. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. Yeah, they're bullet punches. So this is where you were. And if you go the other... Oh, now you're locked out. Love it. I'm sorry. I don't want to be mean to this because yeah, it is. We gotta stop. We gotta stop. Valve will it's be hard. It's, it's hard. Valve will it's hard. It's hard to be like, yeah, we're not gonna release things then. Jesus. I'm sorry. It's funny. I'm just trying to be funny, because because it's hard to be entertaining the whole time. We don't need to be entertaining. We need to be informative, edutainment. Well, there's not something to talk about at all times. Oh yeah. Okay. Here's something interesting actually. So this area, um, this set of three corridors. If you no clip out of bounds, um. You see there are these black rooms. You see those little black rooms? Yeah. Those uh, those would have led to holes in the wall that zombies would have popped out of. Mm. And we know we know this because they actually built that scene later in development. Um, and there's like pictures of it. We even have the animation. The animation was used for when the zombie breaks through the door in Office Complex. But originally he was meant to break through the wall right there. Along with some other ones, like several zombies. And I don't know why they cut that scene. It seems kind of cool, like having having zombies break through the wall all over the place. But also, it probably doesn't make a lot of sense. It also Spider. wasn't very performant, as far as I know. Yeah, that sounds about right. Also, because it's based on the Quake engine, you slide down slope surfaces, so this part is fun. Because you keep sliding as you... yeah. Yeah, the like there's, there's and, the thing. ladders in this. It, like my god, there's a theory about the ladders that Magic told me once. Like when he was looking at the code, he had mm -hmm. a theory about why the ladders do that. Yeah, why? His theory is that they wanted to imitate ladder climbing, so they just used the pain, like they 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 used like the player pain function and just like triggered it on the left and right repeatedly, which also caused the sound to play, like the pain sound that you're hearing. Mm-hmm. And also, it, it makes the view bounce a little bit. So it's supposed to be the act of climbing a ladder, which Quake didn't have. But also, it's kind of annoying. <laughs> like I'm quite he, happy with ladders nowadays. Okay, so this is this is um, this is a security complex, which really does not exist in the final game whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Like, it is completely sort of an unseen chapter. Like the the sort of beats are there. Okay, this turned into We've Got Hostiles. If obviously, I, if I would, like, obviously, yeah. The beats are here. Like, you see the entrance to the silo, which was that red area back there. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, like, you know, you, you fight more grunts. It's like this sort of vent. It's like this sort of industrial vent complex thing. I don't know if this elevator does anything. No, it doesn't. Um, yeah, it doesn't. But, you know, you have the beats of the story. You go, like, you go up to the surface, and you fight some soldiers on the surface. And then you come back down. Uh, wait, you don't go to this. Yeah, you do. And, and then you open the silo when you go to Blast Pit. Blast Pit was basically the same the whole development cycle. Mm -hmm. Like, beat, in terms of the story beats. And some of the level design, too. Don't we have the original names of these chapters somewhere? They're, they're in a document um, that's in the build. I'll send it. It's called walkthrough.doc. What up? No? Why, you thought the person that rang the doorbell was Grubhub? No, there's like a random soup in the trash can. Oh, I got food a couple days ago. I got Mizu a couple days ago. Me. Yeah? Do you want your Christmas present now or later? Okay. Later then. Can you eat it? No. Can you eat the... I mean, you you can eat anything. Uh -uh. JC, don't you agree that you could eat anything? It's just the repercussions of eating the thing. Yeah. There are also difficulties in eating certain things. Yeah. Like, you can you can consume... You can put anything in your mouth and, 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 and put it in your belly. Yeah, but just what happens after that is... You could die. On... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now now we've gone from the we're area streaming. around the... What? I, I don't know if Electra knows we're live. No. You didn't? No. Okay, well, we're live. Like, 354 people. Oh, yeah, 354,000 people. Sure. That's that's yeah. a little less than the number of subscribers I have on VNN. 
All right. Yeah. All right. Tell me about this this map. So uh, the area we were in before was the storage area around the blast pit silo, and mm -hmm. now we've gone into the uh, ventilation complex. It's not like the official name, but that's what it is. It has it's all just air vents and air ducts and stuff. Um, this is probably where Half Life's obsession with air ducts came from. Yes. Because uh, they had a whole all, they had a whole chapter dedicated to just crawling around in air vents, and that is this. Um, basically, there's a near impossible to solve puzzle. <laughs> Related to the air air ducts in this chapter, um, yeah. And yeah, you have like okay, you see that vent network sign? Mm -hmm. um, there are three paths to go in, and you have to get you have to get into the vent machine through the path. So you have to figure out which one is the right one. You have to close C and A, and open up uh, B. Although I don't remember which way means closed. <laughs> Whatever. We'll so we'll see. Let's see if that one's right. Yeah, I yeah. completely agree. This is this is like the worst thing in the beta. Yeah. So here's another panther eye, and here's Farrah Fawcett. Yeah. Uh, they had these mark. They had these um, pinup posters throughout the game that were just textures that they threw up. Like they also had some some of Xena, which is like those one. Um, I, I guess that was just a cultural thing in the '90s because there are some yeah. voice lines from Decay that also reference Xena. Everybody likes Xena or... Warrior Princess. Who doesn't? I mean, it's a good show. It's pretty good. Yeah. So, was this supposed to be a place where he would like this? The 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 Panther Eye was going to be an enemy. Like this was a legitimate Panther Eye placement. That is a, uh, it, it, yeah, probably because that is a monster underscore Panther Eye entity. Like, the Panther Eye didn't have any AI, but that is a Panther Eye enemy, like that you're seeing. Was the Panther Eye AI ever written? <clears throat> I, I I couldn't tell you because we don't have the AI yeah. and we don't we don't have any videos of it functioning so maybe not. There is seems like a good question to bug Mark Laidlaw about. I don't agree. <laughs> I'm kidding. Don't bug Mark Laidlaw about please, this anymore. Please don't bug Mark Laidlaw about Half Life. He's done. Like come on, he's done. He'll answer Prospero question. Did you see that he he mentioned Prospero yesterday? You mentioned Prospero. Yeah, and he's, then he he's... was like, man. Yeah. So this is where you enter the vents. Yep. Uh, you enter up there. I um. Yeah. I will say that yeah. part of the reason I know so much about this is because I worked for years on projects that were trying to recreate this to be more fun. So we we like me and the team would scour the levels for hours, just trying to figure out how stuff worked and what would be a better way to do this or that. So basically, what Valve did, except not as good as what Valve did. Like, Valve actually did it and actually was willing to change stuff. Oh, you did it wrong. Or, no! no, you didn't. Ah! <laughs> oh, my no God. Clip. No clip. <laughs> okay. So now, you're, now you're in here, which is the vent, like, the vent room station. And what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to destroy those fuse boxes by shooting them. Or, no, click E on them. Oh, no, they're broken. Just shoot them once, yeah. They go back and forth, though. Look, yeah, I fixed weird. them with bullets. Oops. Does okay, and that's supposed to turn off all the fans. Yeah, mm -hmm. it did. So now you can now you can backtrack. Oh, yeah, because you did it the wrong way. Yeah, you can backtrack up through the vent, uh, up that one, and go through the main vent, which leads to an area you're supposed to go to. And like this is a, I, I can see what they were going for, yep. and I kind of like it. Um, yeah, if this had more polish, needed. it'd be interesting. Yeah, if yeah. this was made in a way that didn't suck. Sorry, Val. Love you. Should, there should be a should be a ladder in this vent. <laughs> you try every wall. Oh, there you go. Um, what do you oh, think now, is the now, best? What do you think is the best mod out there that that like, does this stuff? Released? Or I mean, Shaft released all their stuff, didn't they? They did. We did. Um, I was on that team for years. What the hell was that? I think I think I think the grunt launched a grenade at you. Did it just crash? It yeah. just crashed. It just crashed. Ah, cool. All right, all right. I'll load it back up. What map was that? And that was C one A three C. Should be. We're getting towards the end already. No, we're not. Actually, yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. There's like a bunch of chapters in the middle that are missing. For example, Blast Pit is completely not present. Even though, it was made. It was made. Like, All right. So, what map was that? C what? C three. C one A three C. Okay. Was there ever? Wait, no. 
Hmm? C1A3C is not that. Oh, wait, oh, yes, C1A... it is. Wait. Where wait. did you start? Hang on. I can't In see your elevator. screen anymore. Yeah, there. one second. Yeah, that I, is the I right. I have to um, reshare no. the screen. Can you hear the sounds from me, by the way? On the Discord? Uh, I think so. I, I didn't I didn't have them on anyway, because I didn't need them. Oh, okay. Because you're a nerd. Yeah, right. In case you forgot I'm a nerd. Alright. So yeah, this is oh, this yeah, is this is the right place. I just came in yeah. from a different area. So this is the this is the early version of the airfield. Um from surface. Which uh no. Um it well, I guess that's not right to say. This is an airfield that later evolved into the area from surface or um we've got hostiles where the osprey flies over. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, yeah, um yeah, yeah. of course you're not supposed to be out here because there's nothing to do out here. Yep. Um but the intention of this little bunker was that you would press a button that would open up the silo down below. Probably that one, I guess. It doesn't actually do anything, of course. Okay. And so let's, and then you go back down, um, or you go back down via the elevator. Okay. And it probably doesn't work. Um, I don't remember if it actually works or not. But I wouldn't count on it. Was there a, was there a change level buffer? No. Okay. Well, so this would go back to the this would go back to the first map, and you would start in the other elevator that you tried to go up. Remember that one? Mm-hmm. And you would you just go back to the first map, and I can like explain it. Which map? C one A three A. Or wait, no. Let me check. C one A three. Yeah. So you come out of an elevator, not this one, but the other one. Uh. And if you go to the right, and then that door would be open, the door to the silo, so you can just no-clip through it. And this is where you would open up the actual silo and go into it. But of course, the logic isn't there and there's no change level. Um, but yeah, you'd go in there and that would be the main silo, where the where the tentacles are. Mm, okay. So this would be the blast pit room. Yeah. Okay. So it's not the it? one that. Um, hang on, the Discord stream is dead. Oh, it is. Yeah. Now let me change the region. Uh, well, maybe that's just not gonna work anymore. Hold on. There we go. So, if you want to see, okay, now the next, um, the next part of the campaign that we have is all the way in yeah. questionable. Yeah, it's a it's a huge jump. Yeah, it's it's always it's always like bigger than I remember. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like we miss like um, miss blast pit, pit power up, up hill, um, on a rail, and then surface tension. No, wait, surface tension is after. Mm -hmm. uh, on a rail, what comes after on a rail? Residue processing, and and a uh, apprehension. Well, residue processing is after you're woken up, right? Yeah. But that's before questionable ethics. Oh right. So we missed like five chapters. All of those chapters had different names and weren't uh, like, very similar to what we had in the final game. Mm -hmm. But we know those levels existed. Mm -hmm. um, like we have screenshots of C two A three, which is um, uh, C two A three, which is apprehension. The early name of apprehension was called Flooded Silo. Very creative. Yeah, the portal device, the office yeah. warrens, the security complex, alien you know, I, research I, lab. So I, I honestly, office warrens isn't the worst name if you know what warrens means. I don't. But like, it, it's it's like, it's the it's the name for how certain species of rabbits live in like big underground tunnel networks. That's what warren. That's what a warren is. All right, what's the next level, JC? Uh, I like how you just skip over that. Okay. <laughs> C2A4. C2A4. Okay. So this is the first level of questionable ethics. I'm so going be up prepared. in LE. Be prepared to get shot immediately. So I was coming up an elevator. Do we know yeah. what was before that elevator? No. Like, we don't have any, we don't have any screenshots or maps that have an elevator like that or any kind of evidence, so... This is just a little room. This is like the first part of uh, 
questionable ethics. The art style, like if you haven't seen this before, yeah. the art style is completely 100% different. There are no similarities from questionable ethics beta to retail. Is the geometry Alpha, at all I mean. the same? No. Look Not even this. the layout. Look at this. You're dying, by the way. Yeah. So there would also be a heavy weapons grunt here. Also, look up. That would have been the sky. Um, we know this because there are other spots where it's clearly supposed to be the surface, but they've covered it up because sky box technology wasn't in yet or it wasn't mm -hmm. working yet. Mm -hmm. So like, look at look at these cool oh, hallways, really and rock corridors. Looking. Yeah. All this stuff that, like I said, would have performed badly. So these are the early retinal. Oh, did they just crash again. No, I'm still oh, here. Stream just acted weird. Oh, the stream is connected. Great. Well, I'm just trying to watch on Twitch. Okay. But yeah, like, um, those are the early version of the retinal scanners. Uh, if you go up here, see this is like this area with the with the doors and the lights and the and the sky. That's supposed to be the sky. Oh, that would have been lo that would have looked really cool. It would have looked, yeah. This I guess it's supposed to be. This whole area looks just. Oh, I love the look of this area. I guess. I guess it would have been dusk based on the lighting. Mm hmm So, I love the doors that open like that. It's. It's a lot of it is very cool. This. This is the. This is the best part of the of the alpha. This is my favorite part. The most detailed, cool looking part yeah. of the alpha. Yeah. So you have these key card doors that don't actually work. Okay. Now here's the awesome part. Is this the stuff with all the blue lighting and stuff? It's, it's, I love this. This is like, it's called Alien Research Lab, mm -hmm. which I guess is supposed to be like, you know, it's where they research the aliens. But when I was like 12 when this came out, yes, I, like, I was 12 when this came out. 2013. I thought, yeah. yeah, I thought this meant that this was a lab made by the aliens. And honestly, I could, I could see that. Yeah, I can see that. Like, look at these buttons on the doors and like the weird flashing three pronged buttons. What's the deal with any of this? What's the deal with airline food? What is the deal with airline food? You know they put Imodium in airline food so that not everybody has to poop on the plane. Huh. Yeah. Nice. Is that nice? I guess that's nice. What's this area for? Which area? This the I got away from the oh. stream to catch up. This like Oh, blank. this little um Yeah. I I don't know. Like Every every little room was probably had some idea, or it was just like a note, like, "Hey, make this go somewhere eventually." I just remembered something really funny about the opening of the about the opening of the alpha. What? So, do you remember the um, door, the the big sliding door that's right after the test chamber, mm -hmm. or the one that's in the test chamber rather? Yeah. Um. There's a in in the file. In the in the BSP, there's actually a developer note written on that door, like in the in the entity data, and it says "severed head goes here." <laughs> okay. <laughs> and and you know what's re you know what's really interesting is that that little comment survived all the way to retail in the double doors that are in anomalous materials. It still says "severed head goes here." It does, yes. Well, I mean, did Shaft ever put a severed head in there? No, but... Why not? I, That's we where the severed like, head goes. Yeah, we should have, actually. Yeah. I don't know why we never thought of that. Totally something we would have done if we had thought of it. I guess we never thought of it. No wonder Shaft fell apart. We didn't have the severed head room. Severed head model? No. I mean, there's that there's that jib model that's like a skull, I guess, if you count that. Hey, Gabe, can we get beta, please? No. Give me, give me beta. Yeah, make you you should like liberally use no clip because a lot of the times you get stuck. Kids born after 1993 can't strafe, jump, bunny hop. All they know is charge HEV suit, eat hot chip, eat hot chip, and lie. That is me, definitely. What did that? What, I keep hearing that. What does that mean? Eat hot chip? Because we like I don't know, it... hot Cheetos or something. <laughs> I think hot Cheetos are like... delicious. Bull squid. Yeah. Oh hey, that's like one of the first bull squids we've seen, actually. It is the first bull squid I've seen. I swear there was one earlier. Oh, I guess there is. Turn into a sausage. Turn into a little sausage. I'm hungry. You hungry for some hot Cheetos? 
Uh, yes. Now that we're talking yeah. about hot chip. It's some yeah, bullshit so, high school thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest, like there's really no golden path here. It's just a bunch of corridors that lead no, to nothing. I, I know, I know. And then the minimalist yeah. mod made a real great joke about it. Ugh. Did you play Half Life One beta minimalist mod? I did not. Okay, well don't. <laughs> Is it not because... as good as Half Life Two's? No, they remade this by just making like an enormous maze. Just just a fucking huge maze. That, oh, that sounds that took like me it. like an hour to solve. Don't don't play it. And like I get the joke. Questionable ethics evolves into just a terrible maze. But damn. Do we have any of the uh alien cow farm people here? I don't know. Magic here, is Valkyrie here, Slarty here? Anybody? Brandon, are you here? Max, are you here? <laughs> he wouldn't even. <laughs> God. Do you know where the fuck to go? Because I haven't played this I, like, in forever, and I okay, don't remember. He, here's what. Here's okay. What map are you on? Go on the console type status. And tell me what map it is. C two A four B. Two A four B. Try try oh, I found using it. the map. I found it. I found it. I found it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wait no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, that's that's where you were. This is. I just. What? It said exit. Why would it say exit? Valve. Why would okay, that okay. say exit? So um. Oh, I know what to do. Uh, you go go to the map C two A four C. I'm pretty sure that's the next map. And if it's not... Uh, Barney! It's not yeah. So at some point you were supposed to get a Barney to help you with the retinal scanner, and you would do the other one while he did the first one. Yeah. Uh, which obviously isn't scripted here. So I have to no-clip through the door. Yep. And there's grunts on the other side, I think. Yeah. Huh. Right. Let me hear you say it one more time. I wish I knew what those those sounds are from. Like the exact source. Yep. This is. Oh, yeah. The stream was like. Fuck you. Stop. Fuck you. Okay. Oh, there, I guess there's some confusion. Barney Barney was supposed to be hostile early mm. in development, but by this point they had already cut that and he was friendly. But he would shoot you if you shot him. Well, he does that in retail. Yeah, of course. So if you go in there, um, there's these, these are these. This evolves into the scientists that would do the retinal scanners, like the the head the head of the facility thing. Yep. Um, but yeah, there's like, there's like no path to the next chapter, which would have actually yeah there is. Um, no clip out of no clip out of the map here. Well, I'm still got stuff to play. Oh, there is still stuff to play, isn't there? Forgot. It's easy to get lost here. And I'm not even the one playing. Oh, here we go. Yeah, this is where you go. So this is the beginning of service tension. Yeah. Which, which at the time was set in the military boot camp. And in fact, the a lot of the geometry from this version of the chapter turned into the multiplayer map called boot, boot camp. camp right. Which is the only map that allows you, that was designed for loot. Yes, the loot game mode, which we'll talk about when we do that, whenever we do whenever that. Whenever we do that, yeah. So... Um, see, you see that they're supposed to be they're supposed to be the sky. Um, oh, they're supposed to be the sky, not that disgusting texture. Yeah, and you see the walls are the exact same wall geometry used in boot camp, and yeah. also used in the screenshots of surface tension from that era. And basically, it was supposed to be a also not lewd. It's loot. L O O T. Damn loot. Chat. Loot. You know, I've yes. been watching a lot of Twitch streams, and I'm learning about Twitch culture. And let me tell you, the biggest thing I've learned about Twitch culture... What? It's awful. Twitch chat horny. Twitch chat, the easy clap bullshit, like, all the, like, communicating through pictures of faces. Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, I this started watching... I don't know how I got down this rabbit hole, but I started watching the S-Fan Ginny stuff. And, like... 
God, like, uh, like, either it's completely fake or they're in love. I don't understand why everybody's just so obsessed. Like, they're in love, but, or it's fake. It, who fucking cares? <laughs> Anyways, what do I do now, JC? So the next map is the communication center because we get to, we get the we get to skip. Uh, we we had to skip server tension because I guess the sky tech wasn't finished yet or something. Yeah, that's probably why they didn't want to show it off because it was just a bunch of, like this the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, probably. So the next map is C three A one, which is communication center. Your favorite. It is my favorite. <sighs> okay. Um, so this is your absolute favorite thing, so just just go off. Say say everything you know. Okay, so um Communication Center evolves into Forget About Freeman. Mm -hmm. Um and you might recognize this garage because it was used in Forget About Freeman at the start of the chapter. Uh pretty much unchanged, with only minor changes. Like this little area was taken away and like, you know, just some little changes, but basically the whole chapter of Communication Center was set in one map, where you would um, meet a female scientist character who would, like, pretend to be your friend and then would trick you and, like, ambush you with soldiers. And Laidlaw said that they later used this concept into Judith Mossman in Half-Life 2, which is cool. And so, okay, you go, in the you go up the elevator, you go down the elevator into the sewer, which later evolves into the sewers from Forget About Freeman. Uh... Like, f Communication Center evolved heavily throughout um, the development of the game. They added a whole bunch of areas, they did a whole bunch of stuff, and a lot of those areas exist in Half-Life 1. They were just reused for Forget About Freeman. Mm -hmm. Except for this helipad. The helipad was cut, which is sad, because it's kind of cool. The original, um, the original idea for the helipad was that there would be a helicopter on the pad, and... Mm -hmm. Snarks would fly down, or snarks, uh, Stuka bats, which is a cut enemy, would fly down from the opening on the ceiling and get cut up by the rotor blades. Yep. Which the, which the player would somehow control. What, did Stuka bats ever get AI? It seems like, uh, maybe. Actually, no, we have their, I think we have their TPP file and they don't have AI. They just, like, sit there. But Magic Nipples, when he was on Shaft, he cre he created great AI for the Stuka Bats. Like, they were very fun to fight. Yeah, so the actual, um, the actual golden path of Communication Center in this version is that you would meet the head scientist in the other side of the complex, uh, and you would have to, like, go to the data room with the glass wall and, like, press a button, and then you'd have to... Like meet this Barney that was hostile. This bot, this Barney was still inexplicably hostile, would trigger the turrets, um, and stuff. Uh, and then, and then you would go back down, and the Lambda Complex door would be open. And that's the. And, oh yeah, I, I'm like, I'm like, move, my brain is moving too fast. You have to go up into the satellite dish dome and align it to the right frequency, so the signal could be sent, and it would send the signal, and then you could go into the. Uh, the Lambda Complex. Now that sounds familiar because Uplink! they use that exact they use that exact concept in Half-Life Uplink, the demo that was released after Half-Life came out. Which was um, wholly original geometry, by the way. Yes. They they used the original voice lines that they recorded with the voice actors, because mm -hmm. those, those voice lines are in Half-Life. Um, but they made totally new geometry uh, with the same concept in mind. Where you have to get to a satellite dish, align it, and send the signal and stuff. But it's not set in the communication center. Obviously. I don't think this thing actually rotates. It does not. Oh, there's also a satellite dish rotating thing in Decay as well. But that was made by Gearbox. And that was also two years after um, Uplink. And like... Half-Life 2 was almost done at that point. It was 2001. <laughs> Uplink? No, Up Uplink was done in 1999. Decay was 2002, I thought. 2001 or 2002. I think, no, it was 01. It came out with the PS2 port. 
Hey, Tyler, you like beta? Nah. So basically, this is just an early prototype of Half-Life Uplink. Yeah. Um, except there was going to be a, like a female scientist character who would betray you, which was later reused for Mossman. And there's stuff I can say about the layout differences, like how behind the front desk, uh, there was originally a uh, entrance to that square lobby, which we haven't actually seen yet, because that's in the tech demo. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Um, that was, that's a leftover from X-Lab. And you'll also recognize the main lobby area because that was reused as the main part of, part of Data Core, the deathmatch map. Because Data Core is just the main level of communication center, a later iteration, but turned into a deathmatch map mm -hmm. because it didn't make it into the game. So that's that's also a good like reference for what communication center was like in like mid nineteen ninety eight, you know, a few months after this. There was also a a a cut like third floor of the communication center in that elevator Tyler was just in. Um I hate I hate the stream being behind. It sucks. Alright, I'll try and fix it. The Discord stream seems to still be working on my end, but it says it says you've been disconnected, sit tight, we'll reconnect you. Okay. Let's try it one more time. Okay. Someone asked in chat, why has Half-Life 1 been out for 20 years and there is no proper map decompiler? That's because you simply can't. Like Half-Life 1 maps are compiled in such a way that you cannot compile them the way you decompile first one maps. Like in Source 1, they don't cull the brush faces that are in the outside of the map. But in Half-Life 1, they cull, they delete every single face that isn't, like, within the level, within the visible level, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the data does not exist in the BSP, right? Yeah. So if you decompile it, the decompiler has to carve, has, has to guess, has yeah. to guess what you wanted. There's the main one carves the level out of a big block and does that. Um, but and it's awful. But there's one called BSP source, which creates a one unit thick brush face for every single face, which is also terrible. Um, JC, where the fuck do I go? Okay, well, basically you've aligned the dish. I'm going to pretend that you align the satellite dish and then uh -huh. you go back. You go back down to the garage, and, I, I you know, know. Okay. In, in theory, the Lambda door would be open now. And since the communication center is all on one level, uh, you don't have to change level, which is nice. Also, I love that I love that bad viz, bad viz compiling. Oh, and someone asked what's wrong with the decals. The decals flicker because of, like, OpenGL bugs. Yep. That's also something that can be fixed. I just don't remember how to fix it. It requires getting some OpenGL DLLs and like. It, well, it requires them. using a wrapper. It requires yeah. tricking your computer into thinking you have a 3DFX card. Yeah. Right. And uh, if you use, uh, if you use, um, what is it called? I completely forgot what we were just talking about. I I'm I'm totally blanking. What were we just talking about? Uh, let's move on. God. Damn it. Do you see the stream? Do you see the Discord stream? I do. I do. No so, yeah, offense, you can open... but this stream sucks. No offense, <laughs> but this stream sucks. <laughs> you know him well. Please elaborate. Please elaborate. Decompiling maps. Ah! It's hard to, like, I'm not, I'm not a presenter. I, just, I know all of this stuff, Don't but it's it hard to present to it. Don't let it get to you. I think he's being an asshole. Yeah, probably. See, people are enjoying it. Oh, yeah. If you use software mode, that's what I was going to say. If you use software mode, the decals don't flicker. All right, so... You have to go down to the garage again. Oh, okay. Not not the not the airfield, or the air... You have to go down to the garage, which is down to the sewer. I got to go into the poopy, poopy room again? Yeah, you have to go into the poop water. Ugh. It's funny, because in, in software mode, the water is blue, not pink. The commentary is great. The background is awful. Oh, you don't oh, you like mean... the layout of the stream. Okay, fuck off. 
<laughs> okay, so you go uh, across. No, that's the wrong. Uh, you go there. Now <gasps> the door's open. Look at that! So you go on the elevator and you go down to Lambda Complex, which is also known as Reactor Lab in this version. Which is very cool. So this is Reactor Lab. Um, there's some geometry that like is is saved in the retail build, but not mm -hmm. much. The general idea is there though, like some of the geometry sort of... here was reused for for opposing force, wasn't it? Um, no, that was in um, that was in communication center. I know, but like, didn't like Gearbox use old geometry that was unused from Half Life One in opposing force? They did use a little bit, yeah. How would so, that have worked? They probably had access to the map sources. Gearbox, Randy, hit me up. Oh fuck! I <laughs> let me open up. Uh, let me open up the walkthrough for this map in um, Notepad, be or because it's actually kind of interesting. So I'm just gonna read a little bit of this. Okay. The, the reactor lab currently allows free non-linear exploration with plenty of combat. Doors and unfinished puzzle elements have been removed for ease of navigation. In its final form, the level will be one large puzzle requiring the player to disable and flood a reactor core. As you explore the map, you will find a cruise locker room containing storage lockers where radiation suits will hang, a radiation shower, or and a radiation shower, which will be useful in case you go swimming in the reactor core without your suit. Wait, so the radiation shower was to remove radiation from the player? I didn't know that. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, okay. that, was the, that was the plan at least. And so this is the radiation shower, I'd guess. Yes, yes. Huh. That's neat. Okay, cool. Yeah, it is neat. And this is where the radiation suits would have been in these lockers. In these, I'm going to guess. These, like, yeah. open areas here. That's cool. So... Is this um, build publicly available? Yes. Yes, it is. It is on, it is, it, it, it is it on leaked, like... It leaked years and years. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Okay, I, I wanted to explain that elevator. Um, That elevator... Um, it, it That elevator is weird because... It's in Reactor Lab, C3A2, mm -hmm. but it has a button that goes to Communication Center and a button that goes to a chapter that doesn't exist called C3A3, which does not exist in Half-Life 1. So, uh, just, you have to reload the level, C3A2. Yeah, okay. But yeah, C3A3 was a chapter um, that was that did not exist in the final game, period, Like, because in retail it goes from C3A2 to C4A1, which is Zen. And C three A three would have been more Zen labs didn't like this. Exist at this point. Can you it explain to me like that? So we always talk about how Zen was made in like the final months of development. You know, like not even like month. Like yeah. So what was it before? Well, based on what we know, it sounds like it was nothing. Like they just no one wanted to work on it, so no one worked on it. But they always knew you were going to go to the alien planet. Yes. So this, uh, if you check the console. No, I guess it doesn't work. Um, it's funny because if you load this map in the retail Half-Life and you open that door, it actually put it actually prints some text on the screen that's like, "Door cannot open due to reactor breach." Oh, like, really? it's yeah, it does that in retail, but not in the alpha. It's just a feature that doesn't work. Yeah, so I'm gonna be making a video. Probably, like, I need to be just cranking videos out for the rest of this month if I want to like make money. Oh, yeah, and, so and if you go just, back to where that... That's playing the go game. Back, go back where? Yeah. Go back to where the turret was. Yeah. I'm making a video about Jeff's discs. Um, and kind of a plea to both of Alvin and Jeff to fucking put that shit out. Does it work in software mode? I think it might work in software mode. If it did, it would print a console. It wouldn't print on screen. So you wanted me to go in here. Yeah. And you're supposed to, according to the walkthrough, you're supposed to break the window and go through the door. Probably with a grenade because grenades are faster at everything. Oh yeah, so this is really interesting. Don't kill the other one. In this in this one area, panther eyes actually move, and I don't know why to this day they do, but they can actually move in this area. They can't attack you, but they can actually move. Wow. In every in every other area of the game where there's a panther eye, it just stays in place. That's cool, man. Fuck. Yeah. That's really neat. I have no idea why I can move here and not anywhere else. I'm gonna leave him alive. I'm gonna call him Daniel. He's Daniel. Do not kill Daniel. He's a friend. Um, AI nodes weren't really a thing. I mean, they did exist. I don't think this area has AI nodes, though. Maybe it does. Well, who was just attacking me? Might have been the panther. No. What? 
I was just getting attacked. Oh, um, we're, maybe you're getting crushed by the door. I have no idea. Huh, that was weird. Okay. Nah, shit just happens. Shit happens. If I turn no target on, he still follows me. He's following me. Yeah, they, I think they just have a beeline for the player. That's cool. Yeah. So if you go in here, is another change level. Oh, there is? Um, there was another yeah. door over here. Does that go anywhere? Um, that leads into the reactor, but you're supposed to go around to get into the reactor, so it doesn't actually lead anywhere. Oh, like, so this is the react. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Yeah. Daniel will not replace Dougie B. It's true. No one will replace Dougie B, but still. So this is the uh, first part of the reactor. If you look down in the water, you see it's the same cores that they used for it's the uh, retail. Before. Yeah. Yeah, for for the coolant areas, and it's the same. It's the same puzzle, except it doesn't work, obviously. So you go up, and like, man, these ladders fucking suck. All right. Yeah. I like how some people think I'm the programmer for Half Life. Yeah. That. The, yep. We got we got the programmer of Half Life here. It's me. I wasn't even born yet. JC, I am gonna edit this down like each of these episodes that I'm gonna because I'm gonna do a Good lot luck. of these. No, I will, and then they're gonna go on VNN. So yeah, we'll talk about it later. But um, the one I want to do after this is um, Team Fortress Two stuff. Whoa! Reactor. Oh, yeah, so, this is... so the reactor is kind of wacky. You should be able to jump down into the water and swim out through into somewhere else. If you don't get crushed by the things, yeah. You had a crouch, my boy. You should be able to go into like a, a room here, yeah. No, this room doesn't, you know. <laughs> Tyler just kills all scientists on site, just like real life. Yep. Just like real life, sure. Oh, so, so look at this. Look at this. What? This should be very familiar. It has the map, it has the two catwalks over the water. This literally is in retail, just bigger catwalks. Do you recognize it? Um, Do I need to get a screenshot? Is this from Lambda Core? Yes. Yeah, I mean, it looks familiar. Yeah. Hang on, I, 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 should, I should show this because this exact layout with those machines is in retail. Uh, when I edit it in... Um, I'll send... Do you have Sony Vegas on your computer? Yes. I'll send the file, and if you could edit in, like, some of the images that you're talking about. Yeah. That's I gotta cool. find... I gotta find which map I'll and half I'll do as it much is. of it as I can, but I know that there's some of this that, that you're referring to that I'll need. So what's the date of the alpha? Um, the, like, date on the, the date on the files is... It's tough is to the, answer that question. Yeah. Yeah. The date on the disc is September fourth, nineteen ninety-seven, but the maps are older and the build is spe like the build was made especially for it and stuff. So, mm -hmm. kind the of a hard are question from to the answer. Summer, the build does not represent the game. It was it represents what Valve wanted to show. Yeah, which is different. I don't know. This is a preview build. It's almost like you know saying, oh, E3 two thousand three for Half Life two. You know. Yeah, because it was it was for showing to the press. This is actually we haven't even got to it yet, but this is the build they used for E3 1998 or E3 1997 rather. Oh, is it? Or it's the maps at least. Um, we don't really know if they played the actual campaign, but the levels they used for the tech demo are in here. Are we gonna play those? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think uh, what map are you on? Can you check what map you're on? Yeah, one sec. Uh, C3A2A. So that is the last map of the campaign. All um, right, so there's nowhere else I can go? Nope. I think you've seen basically every room in the campaign that we have. Ah, cool. So the next what, step what would, would you be to- Chat, that was Half-Life as of summer 1997. What the would you game, rate the it? The game had been in development for a little under a year. If you were to rate the game out of five, one being the lowest, five being the highest, what would you give that game as a as a game? Better than Cyberpunk 2077. Two out of five. Poop out of ten. Two, three, three, three. It's basically finished. Two out of five. Two out of seven. Seven. Four. 
Hey, the Reno. How you doing? All right. So, JC, what are we doing now? So, in uh, in the provide. So, this build has this campaign, but the the actual batch files that launch it originally, yeah, um, launch you right into the press demo, the E3 1997 press demo. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's that's what they wanted the people, the press people, to see. The the campaign was only like a side thing, I guess. Because it, it launches you right into the tech demo. So go to the map called Tech Demo, which is the... So E3 1997, Half-Life had a booth. We don't have much pictures or information about it, but we know that they played these maps. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, this basically has little rooms that show each like technical feature they've made, like colored lighting, skeletal animation, DSP effects. This we'll go colored through each lighting, one. is it fake? No, it is real colored lighting. Those are those are those those are actual red, blue, green lights that are creating white in the middle. They actually calculated the radiosity for that and the colors, which is very cool. I like this zero texture. Yeah. Is the is the Discord stream working for you? Yep. Okay. Skeletal animation. Okay. I this is a, if you hit it, it, it starts or it just does it automatically. So. It's it's not confirmed, but this looks like a model from Prospero. Mm -hmm. um, it's called PR Droid, as in like probe droid, based on the texture names. Also, it looks like um, it's from Star Wars. Yeah, it looks like the uh, pit droid, pit drone, pit droid, or whatever from the. Wait, was that was that episode of Star Wars even out yet? No. So I oh, guess so... It, it wouldn't be. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh yeah, I never realized that that wouldn't have even been out yet. The prequels. Anyway, so look at him go. He, this model is probably from Prospero. It definitely doesn't correspond to anything from Half Life. Yeah. Yeah, nothing from Half Life corresponds to this. But it is possible that it's either from another Valve project or Prospero. And that's about all I have to say about this little guy, except for the fact that his animations are cool. Especially for 97. Transparency. Yeah. So this is textures that you can like look through and like you can look through multiple of them at the same time. Which is actually pretty impressive for ninety seven. It's impressive now. Yeah, it has it's um Bethesda games don't have this at all. Even 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 source sometimes messes up like the uh layered transparency, mm -hmm. which has a name I can't remember. So that's a Trans room, yeah, this this is the trans pride room. That's where I live. Flocking. Oh, this is funny. So this is the flocking floater AI. These are Boyd's, um, which uses the tech from the Boyd experiment, which was a not Valve experiment, just based on flocking AI. Mm -hmm. um, it's called alpha sorting, that transparency thing. So they, I think they hired the guy who made this, or they, they licensed his work, and they made a creature called a Boyd, which does flocking. This is like, this is like dynamic flocking AI. Um, where they sort of fly together like birds, and yeah, it, it's it's not the greatest. No. And you know what? They used it exactly once in Half Life. They used it exactly once. Where? Uh, in the G-Man level, oh, where right. where G-Man is talking to you. They use yeah. it in the background for like two seconds while G-Man talks to you in that one area. Good job, Boyd. Hope you liked your okay. two seconds. Yep. So, also, people in the chat are asking where you can download this. Um, HL2.beta, oh, HL2 beta. Yeah. yeah. You can download it on the HL2 beta website or on Valve Archive. Um, Valve Archive might download faster because it's hosted in the United States. I got this from HL2-beta, HL2-beta.ru, which is, like, the best beta website ever. Hey. It really I'm... is. Fuck you. You know it is. Yeah, I know. Project, the Project it's Beta the... people are, are amazing. Like, it's the, the work OG. that they do, holy shit. It's the OG. Like, the HL2 Vega build is just... Oof. Oh, how to get it running? Oh, um... To run it on a modern Windows PC, all you have to do is delete a DLL called OpenGL32 mm -hmm. um, in, the, in, the, in the folder of the game, and then run the engine.gl.exe, and then it will You just should run. release a fixed build. You should, should. On, the, on the Valve Archive, just like a zip of just the build with your fixes. Yeah, and like my config. So these are the DSP effects, which is um, 
uh, doing stuff to the sound to make it sound like it's in a different area, like echoing in the echoing in a large area, or sounding like compressed in a vent, or muffled in an area underwater. Um, which was also impressive for '97. In fact, um, there's a list of DSP presets that they made for like 1997, right? Yep. And Valve uses that list with no edits to the current day. <laughs> like, they use yep. the exact same list. Yep. It's like, it's like, <laughs> it's like Alien One, Cavern One. It's in uh, Half Life. Alex. Hallway One. Yeah. It's in. It is in Half Life. Alex. <laughs> It's in, it's in CS:GO. It's in Alex. It's in Half-Life 2. It's in everything. Oh, here's scripted sequences, which is just a funny way of saying models with a sequence, like an animation. Uh, uh, so yeah, he gets eaten, blood comes out, and he gets taken away. It's a good animated sequence. Was this? ever put in the game or was it made for this tech demo I don't think I don't have an exact answer but based on the fact that this room doesn't look like a room from Half-Life I think it was made for the tech demo mm. also blue panther eye oh yeah that's the old that's the old panther eye model the older one um you should be able to jump up on that box yeah wait till he comes by he sees it he uh he waits for a second right there on that box so you can get a closer look at him <gasps> blue panther eye and the panther eye has the has the Ted Backman trademark. Tyler, do you want to say what the Ted Backman trademark oh, is? Oh, you uh, should we even talk about? It? <laughs> uh, people in the chat are saying it. Anyway, yeah, it okay. Has the butthole. Everything's got to have a butthole. Ted Backman does porn. Jesus Christ. Okay, so this is the um, this is the Poly Robo, which was to demonstrate a high poly. Chrome enabled animating model running at like high performance. Um, and it is it is using the dancing baby animation yep. from that hang on, and I, I wanna the the design of the model is based on one from an anime, a, a robot from an anime. And I, I'm trying I'm gonna get the exact name. It's based on the Regult Battle Pod from the anime Super Dimension Fortress Macross. The dancing animation it performs is based on the dancing baby cha-cha type dance. Yeah, so. Was there ever a green panther eye? Probably not. I think it was just red and blue. All right. Oh, also, there's also an unused walking animation for that guy. Huh. And and the animation um, reference uh, animations in Half-Life can reference sound effects to play on certain frames. Mm-hmm. Uh. And the the animations for the Poly Robo reference um, robot walking sounds that we don't have. So, JC, where are we going now? So now we're going to a map called Main Demo, which is the sort of uh, uh, main like area where you can visit several different demos. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, let's just go. Oh. Excuse me? What does that say? I can't Texture read it. overflow. Max GL textures. Oh, love it. Love it. Yeah, it's buggy. It's an alpha. It's an it's an old alpha from, like, before I was born. Oh, and by the way, I put a link in the chat where you can download the build from my website. Uh. So, yeah, this is main demo. Uh, and the first part is the lobby from the communication center. Or from X Lab, rather. Mm -hmm. Oh, someone redeemed random Valve fact for ten thousand points. You do it. Random Valve. Tyler. <laughs> I don't know. Give us a random Valve fact about forget about Freeman. Forget about Freeman. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know one. Um, so in forget about Freeman, uh, when you go to that hallway with the Vortigaunts, that's by the uh snark pit in the water. Mm. Like, there's the door there. Uh, at the end of the hallway that like the big garage door mm -hmm. and it's supposed to lead to the uh area with the akira elevator in lambda complex and that's that was the original lambda door but they added that little uh interim area for performance and also like in the little garage with the tank that's a random half-life fact there you go and it was very messy because it's hard to put it together on the fly have confidence so where are we at, JC? 
Okay, so this is more areas from Xlab um, that they reused for the tech demo. Probably because they looked nice. Yeah. So down below you, there's there's bull squids that are walking around. This is from an area that Valve codenamed Water Lab, which mainly consisted of like catwalks over water, like this. Mm -hmm. So according a lot of to this is just X Lab level geometry repurposed. Yeah, especially that especially that lab with the Barney that you killed earlier. That's also um, X Lab stuff. All all of the basically every level here, every area is an area from X Lab, a different part of it. Just sort of strung together with these little corridors. And so now I, th I think you've explored everything in this. Oh, you missed one. Um, where is it? Yeah, down there. More water lab stuff. So this is the model showcase. Um, yeah. Uh, you have like the. Uh, you can like make the waddles rotate. You can shoot them to change their animation. If you press the button, they should rotate. I think. Button ain't working. Shoot the button. Dang. Oh, there it goes. No, oh, well. I think. Yeah, there it goes. So, um, you know, you have all the mo these are basically all the models in the game. There's the heavy weapons grunt, the cut class. Uh, and yeah, you, know, you have Barney scientist Hound Eye. It, it, you know what? It's, I just realized something interesting. It's group yeah. like this because hound eyes were supposed to be friendly. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I think that's. I think that, I never really realized that, but now it makes sense. And so, th these all of these little cyclers are are bespoke or uh, custom entities made in this area. What do um, you mean? Like, let me pull it out. Here we go. Like, so in Half Life, you have an entity called a cycler. Uh, which cycles animations when you shoot it. Mm -hmm. It's just for testing and stuff. But in this area, um, all of the cyclers are specifically for each enemy. Why would they There's do like, that? I I don't know. This map is very old. It's from E397. Keep it. Keep in mind that E397 was like in May 1997. So this map is quite old. The the game had only been in development for like six months. And we have Vorts here, even though. They're not in the campaign that we have. And the model is basically identical, and the textures are identical, except their uh, the color values are a little different. Mm -hmm. um, and it's still called an alien slave. It, it is an alien slave in this build. Yeah, Vortigaunce is a retcon, but I just can't not call it a... No, it actually isn't a retcon. I think it's in the Half-Life source code. Is it really? It's either... I, I think it's also in the Prima guide. What? Yeah. I had no idea. So that 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 is like a retcon, but it was like done by the time of Half Life being finished. The shadows are just three D models that are set underneath the dude. Yeah. Yeah. Um. That's the last oh yeah, thing I, we're probably gonna look at. The the one thing I wanted to mention is that there is a um, an FGD file for the alpha that yep. is in the build because mm -hmm. there's a, there's a Worldcraft demo in there. Mm -hmm. Um. Hang on. Here we go. So. Not only is there an alien grunt, which is the big guys that shoot the bees, but there's also an enemy called Alien Assault. Alien Assault Trooper. Which we have no idea what that was supposed to be or what it even looked like. Damn. But given given the fact that the alien slave isn't listed, it's possible that it was an alternate name for the alien slave. Maybe. Well, isn't there concept art for like a big beefy Vortigaunt dude? Um, there is there is concept art for the Vortigaunt that is very muscular looking. That could be it. Maybe. Also, so the tentacles don't actually attack you, but they do have animations for it, and they're they're kind of dancing right now. Are I they guess. cycling or? I think they are cycling, but yeah, they're cycling. Um, the uh, as you can see, the 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 concept for Blast Pit where you had to hide from the sound of the tentacles and like avoid their beaks. Mm -hmm. That that you know. One of the oldest things in the game. That is one of the oldest things in Half Life because mm. one of the, one of the first files or one, one of the first screenshots released, um, one of the oldest ones is Blast Pit with the tentacle. Yep. And like having to not having to not make sound to survive is something that Valve really liked, and they used it in Alex. They used it in fucking Half Life Two, didn't they? No. Did they? they? Didn't. No, they didn't. I'm no. Not, they... Nope. All right. So. Nice. How oh, there is the stockyard map, I guess. We already looked. We already looked at it. Yeah, Yo, it's just an early Ohio. version of Stockyard. Love you, Zero Sands. Seven months on the Twitch Prime. Thank you very much. 
Didn't oh it... hydras? Yeah, hydras. That's a good point. Yeah, I guess hydras were an evolution yeah. of the tentacle, but they did cut them. To be fair. Okay, so that's pretty much everything in the point five two alpha, other than demos. But um, we'll do that. We can watch time. like one of them. We'll do that another time because we just hit two hours. Right. Oh um, shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's one of my rules is I have to cut streams off around two hours so that I don't waste my whole day. Um, but JC, thank forever. you very much for hanging out with us for a little bit and talking about one of your favorite fucking things ever, the point five two yeah. alpha. Jeff, release the fucking... Oh, God. You have no idea how happy that would make all of us. Yeah. So I'm going to be making an edit of this stream, putting it up on VNN. I'm also going to be making a video uh, explaining what we know about Jeff's uh, alpha discs uh, and then talking a bit about why it they should be released. JC, I'd like your help on that one, if that's okay. Um, yeah. And thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us today. The next episode of the Valve Cut content exploration will be about Team Fortress 2 Invasion uh, and Valve's Team Fortress, Team Fortress 2 Brotherhood of Arms, all that stuff. Uh, and how we're going to do that is we're actually just going to play Nuclear Dawn together uh, and just talk about stuff, listen to stuff, look at stuff. Does that there sound still good? Should, we still should have a way to put stuff on screen if we have stuff to put on screen. In my opinion. Nice. Let's, yeah, that's, I completely agree. Thank you very much for the seven months, Troboba. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that off stream. I'm sure there's a way of doing it. Um, yeah, but we'll get it. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, JC, for hanging out with us. Talk to you guys later. Peace and hair grease. Peace and hair grease.